I wonder what the wizard of smart David Brooks would have to say about this. There's a Rasmussen poll out. 59% of Republican voters say that Sarah Palin shares their values. Not that they share hers, but 59% of Republican voters say that Palin shares their views. Now, what would Brooks say about that? And there's also this. In that same Rasmussen Report poll, there's an item near the bottom. And among the political class, just 3% have a very favorable opinion of Sarah Palin, while 64% hold a very unfavorable view. Uh, The political class, meaning people in Washington, for the most part, people in elective office, uh, people that work for people in elective office, uh, much of the, the commentariat. Uh, or the uh, or the punditry out there, but this, this the intellectuals and the elitists and and their fear of Sarah Palin is is probably equal to the same reasons that they fear me, or 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 don't like me or whatever. To those who oppose her ideologically, they fear her gaining power and pushing her ideas because they work. They feared Reagan too. And they said the same things about Reagan, not quite as vitriolic, but they said Reagan was stupid and amiable dunce, likable enough guy, but they treated Reagan like an idiot. Now, if, if, I'm, if I'm David Brooks or any of these elitists, and I, 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 I'm, I'm really in tune with what's going on here, in a contest between Sarah Palin and Barack Obama, for example, or Barack Obama and anybody, Obama should lose. Obama's destroying the United States. But they love Obama in part because they think he's one of them. Smart, intellectual, elite, dresses well. Brooks even writes about the the crease in Obama's slacks and how he's impressed by that. I kid you not. He was impressed by the crease in Obama's slacks as a sign of uh, uh, refinement. Beltway Republicans, the wizards of smart. The Beltway Republicans have been running things. They have slowly lost Republican political power. So they are afraid of their own jobs and credibility if uh, somebody like Palin with her conservative viewpoint rises. And I I have to tell you, the the reason why Palin's being hit here is not because she's Palin, it's because she's conservative. She is the most conservative of the Republican candidates, or I don't even know if she's a candidate, but of all the Republican public figures... That might be in politics. She is by far the most conservative, and everybody's threatened by that. The ideas work. Conservatism is the number one thing which will undermine Obama. Conservatism is the number one thing that would undermine the Beltway Republicans. The the, the rhino Republicans hold on the power uh, or hold on power in the Republican Party. Any conservative would do that. Any conservative who sought elective office and might win threatens everybody else, Republican or Democrat alike. So what they fear the rise of a conservative. They fear the success that a conservative would implement if given the chance. And you know, as for elites, if you don't use your brain, it doesn't matter how smart you are. And they're not using their brains. They're reacting totally. For intellectuals, the last organ they're using is their brain. They're reacting with their heart or some other orifice that's getting jealous. But uh, they're not reacting with their brains. And this is the thing that's the most amazing to me. These are supposedly the smartest people among us. These are the elites. These are the classically educated. These are the people who have a refined sophistication. And in their reaction to Sarah Palin or anybody else who's prominently conservative, they don't use their brains. They use other emotions, primarily fear and jealousy. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington, this afternoon on Andrea Mitchell Reports, said this. Let me just share with you something on page 379 in the book. This is about that weekend in July when I went fishing with Sarah Palin. Secretly, I must admit, I really wanted to see the likes of Andrea Mitchell on my home turf, witnessing how happy and a peace of mind my, of my, my family was. For the last time I had seen Andrea, and she goes on to having seen me in Washington. So they issued an open invitation to us in the press to go fishing with her. And she says, 
I wanted to see Andrea and her colleagues sporting fish slime waders banging around in a skiff, stuck in the mud, and trying to pull themselves back over the bow. At the very least, they would see there was no diva in me. But she writes that the weather didn't cooperate. It was sunny, hot, and flat calm, so dang it, none of them got slimed. <laughs> Yes, indeed, but Andrea Mitchell, somebody had to read the book to get the 379, page 379, to find it and tell Andrea about it, or Andrea herself had to read, because there's no index in there. And that, that's, the, uh, that's the point. All right, Floral City, Florida. Carol, glad you called. You're next on the EIB Network. Hi. Thank you so much, Rush, for taking my call. We just love you, and thank you for everything thank you, you do. Thank you. You bet. I'm scared to death of the Sarah Palin phenomenon. I'm a huge fan of her, so I don't want to get on the wrong side of you. I love her. She, If she's our only hope for 2012, we're going to blow a golden opportunity to defeat the most destructive administration we've ever had. She's great. I love what she's doing. She ha does not have enough appeal enough to win. We need voters for her to actually win. We've got to win. You mark my words, Rush. The elite media is going to start pushing her as our leading candidate so they can squash her like a bug. It's, it's about winning, and if, if she's our only hope, I'm scared to death that Obama's going to win, and I don't think this country could withstand uh, it. Who else? Okay, all right. Fair enough. Who else can beat her? I don't know. I'm still I'm still mourning over George Allen. I mean, I don't know. There's no one out there. That's the problem. So if we keep pushing her and we're not looking for somebody else, we're going to have another uh, a repeat of Obama. Well, now, I, I, you, uh, you think the elite media is pushing her to be the nominee? I look at it the other way. I think they're trying to destroy her. Well, they will, but, but they would love her, her to run against him because they know she can't win. Uh, I'm thinking they're that going doesn't to have make change no, of no, Wait a minute. It doesn't make sense. Well, here's nothing why, makes no, sense no, to no, me. No, here, here's why it doesn't make sense. Okay. If they really thought she was a guaranteed loser, they wouldn't be trying to destroy her. They'd be promoting her. They'd be talking about how she may be the only chance the Republican Party has. They'd be doing whatever they could uh, to uh, put pressure on Republicans to nominate her. What they're doing is putting pressure on Republicans to abandon her, to leave her alone. And I think that's because they really, I, I know it's, they, 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 it, 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 it's not, even her, if there were another Republican in the mix that or was able to articulate conservative values and principles like she does, they'd be attacking that person, too. I realize that, Russ, but you don't think uh, two years from now they'll completely turn things around because they're not true to anybody or themselves even. So I, I just don't trust these people so much so that nothing would surprise me. Well, Another problem I have with what you're saying is that you're saying we can't do anything successfully unless we somehow out-trick or woo the media. And that's simply not true. We defeat the media all the time. They don't. Their candidates don't win every time they run for office. Can you think of anybody out there? I, ca I can't find a soul. I mean, I can't think of a no, soul. No, but I'm not endorsing her either. Oh, I know that. It's way too but soon. I, I, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm commenting on things as they are today. I can't see the future. I don't even know what she's going to do. I asked her, and she wouldn't say. I don't know what her plans are. You have to read between the lines in the in the book. And I, you know, the, the subtitle of her book is uh, a title, and I think yeah, this might be telling. <clears throat> the, the title of her book, the subtitle is "An American Life." That just happens to be the title of Ronald Reagan's autobiography. A biography. But I, I, I don't think that's accidental that she's tying into uh, into Reagan. So I, I don't know uh, specifically I just, what her future I, is, yeah. and I don't know. You know, a lot probably will be learned on this book tour. She's able to reconnect with the base out there and how this all goes. You know, she's going to small towns in the heartland. She's ignoring big cities like Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco. And I expect certain people on our side to say, well, hell, she can't win if she's going to ignore New York, San Francisco, L.A., which is going to be a mistake because that's like saying we can't win unless we convince enough liberals to vote for us. Um, she's, she's going to where the, uh, the people that make this country work operate. Uh, and and if, if you want to say that there's a strategery here that leads into a future political campaign, I think you could conclude that as a guess. 
But nobody really knows, and nobody knows what the next two years are going to bring. Nobody knows what the next two months are going to bring in terms of politics. And who else is going to and try to get in the race? I'm, you I'm, might have Mitch Daniels from Indiana try to get into it. Uh, Bobby Jindal. There's a whole lot of names that are not at the top of people's minds right now, other than the people that ran last.